Hey guys, it's time for Facebook Live this week. We're going live on Thursday. Hope you guys can find me. I just realized I don't have my, my iPad to see all your comments. Let's see if I can find me as well on Facebook. I hope you guys have had a great new year. It is now three days past. I don't know, when do we stop saying Happy New Year? Let's see, am I in the right place? I see a couple of you jumping on. All right, looks like I am. All right, good. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have so much to tell you today. Hi, Mariah. Hi, Dina, how are you guys? All right, hi. Oh, I can say hi to everybody. I'm recognizing everybody's name. Hi, ladies, I hope you had a wonderful holiday and, and a happy new year. We had an amazing couple of weeks. I um, sent my husband back to work yesterday. <laughs> he went back to work after 10 days, but the kids are still home and um, enjoying being super lazy. My little one slept till 1130 this morning, which was crazy. She's a sleeper. I said, school starts Monday. Got to get back to getting up early. We'll see. But anyway, so I am doing my Facebook Live this week on Thursday because as you know, it's a big day in the Stampin' Up! world. We've got two new catalogs. We are done with Christmas. Thank goodness. I was super done with Christmas. I don't know about you guys, but I get to a point where I'm like, ugh. My daughter and I went somewhere this week on New, Year, New Year's Day shopping and there was Christmas stuff and it almost made me nauseous. <laughs> it's like, goodbye, get out, go away. Now it's time for occasions and the occasions catalog um, goes from January 3rd to the end of May and then in June we start with the new annual catalog and it all starts all over again. So occasions has spring stuff, there's birthday stuff, Valentine's, Easter, um, so it just covers those five, five months. Um, but the really exciting part of January 3rd is celebration. And I'm sure most of you already know what celebration is, but if you're new or you weren't, you haven't been around um, the Stamping Up world, celebration is three months where you get free product with every $50 purchase. It has a really cool history. Um, many, many years ago, Stamping Up, when they were a new company, we're 30 years old this year, so this was way back, like the second or third year, I think, um, they weren't making it and they were gonna have to file bankruptcy. And they developed the idea of celebration to save the company. And it, of course, just did more than that. It just was huge and amazing. And they have continued this tradition every year. So January, February, March, celebration. And hopefully you've gotten this catalog. If not, I have linked them on my blog post. Um, I will link them when I'm done with the video. I'll go back and link all the stuff I'm talking about in the, this, the description. But right now you can go to pinkbuckaroo.com and hopefully find the post for all these projects. So everything I'm gonna talk about in the next few months is coming from these two catalogs. They are great, they're amazing. I am madly in love with them. Honestly, I had a very hard time <laughs> deciding what three things to show you. I could have shown you 18 things today, 18 different projects, um, but my battery wouldn't last that long. So we're doing three. Um, there is another thing that I really have to make sure that you know about during celebration, and it's the starter kit special. I've posted about it a couple times, I've emailed you, but I want you guys to know how important this starter kit special is. The starter kit means that you become a demonstrator and you can be a demonstrator like me and sell products or you can be a demonstrator who just joins for the discount. I have, I get that question a lot. I just want the discount. Is that okay? Yes, it's okay. Actually, majority of demonstrators just join to get the discount and Stampin' Up! knows that and, and it's totally acceptable, especially during celebration, believe me. Majority of people are doing that. Um, they change the starter kit special from year to year during celebration. Um, this year, I was very excited about what they're offering. It's $99, just two choices. And, that, and the kit's always $99, and usually you get $125 of product. So basically, you're getting $26 in product free. That's the rest of the year. But during celebration, you're actually getting $175 worth of product. And option one is $99. Same 
Same as always, $99, you get $175 in product of your choice from either this catalog or the big catalog, which I have right here, or even the clearance rack. You can add clearance rack stuff to your starter kit, okay? And it's $99 free shipping. That's an amazing deal. Um, it's not quite 50% off everything, but almost getting 50% off of, you know, it's like 40% off of $175 worth of stuff. Um, now, option number two is the one that I think that you should choose. Um, if you have a celebration catalog, you need to look on page four and five. And it'd probably be much clearer than me trying to stumble over telling you all the details. But option two is $129 you get $175 in product, again, of your choice, free shipping, but you also get that bag. And I've shown you this bag before, let me grab it. It is called the Craft and Carry Tote, and it is awesome. You can see how big it is. It has this beautiful logo right here, the 30th year anniversary logo. It's tons of pockets, and if you can see inside, it's got cardstock and stamps, and tons of stuff. It also has this big shoulder strap. Oh, it's heavy. It's full of product. So this bag is only available with a starter kit. Option two. Even demonstrators can't buy that bag now. We could pre-order it and we had to pay $50 for that bag. And now with a starter kit, option two, you get that bag $175 worth of product for just $129. So you can see why this is a really big deal. Um, I think that this might be the best starter kit promotion we've ever had. Now, on top of that, you also will be part of my team and you'll get all my PDFs for free. You get my class kits, basically at cost. Um, you get all kinds of rewards and incentives and you get to be part of a private Facebook group. Um, it really is a ton of amazing things. So if you spend a lot of money on Stampin' Up! or if your wish list is really, really big, I would highly recommend that you go over and you check out that starter kit. It um, is, actually it's this one, <laughs> it is amazing. Okay, so I just have to be transparent and let you guys know that if you're gonna spend a lot of money, that's the best way to spend your money. Um, of course, if you wanna put in a regular order of $175, go ahead, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you no, but I am gonna tell you that you really do wanna check out that starter kit um, because it is a huge bargain. All right, so Mary Jo says she's having issues with audio. Is anybody else having issues with audio? Let me know. I have my microphone plugged in, hopefully it's good. Now I wanna show you a whole bunch of other things, you guys, and I think the best way to do that is to flip my camera. Um, I have a ton of stuff to show you. I told you today it was gonna be big. Lisa, your audio is good? Okay. Um, so I'm gonna switch it over and hopefully we won't shake too much. Um, who was it that just said that? Um, Mary, who was it? I now have to go back, my comments are all messed up. Mary Jo, X out of Facebook and open it again and maybe that will fix it for you, okay? All right, so let me do this. This is the best way for me to show you everything closer and without a lot of messing around. So close your eyes while I do this because this is a lot of messing around right here. <laughs> All right, look, you guys, I have a new table. It's very pretty. Hopefully I don't mess it up and make it um, dirty too quickly. But I was tired of the way my table looked. We resurfaced my table and did all kinds of things over the break, and I'm very excited about it. Okay, I don't even know where to begin, you guys, to tell you about all of this. First of all, if you don't have these catalogs, um, two things about that. If you ordered from me in the last six months from my stampinup.com website, that means you ordered product, I automatically sent these to you in the mail in the, about the middle of December. It came in a pink envelope. I am hearing that they, are, they have just started arriving this last week because you guys know the Christmas shipping was a nightmare this year. If you are a demonstrator, you should have gotten these 
straight from Stamping Up. But what I'm also hearing is that nobody has, get, has received them. Well, not very many people have received them. The, the postal service has just been so overwhelmed that the media mail, which is what the catalogs would have gone, um, is super delayed. So be patient. It's not Stampin' Up's fault. It's not my fault. It's not your demonstrator's fault. Um, it's just the post office. I mean, you guys, we talked about last month about how many times I was getting deliveries during the day. I have no idea how they were keeping up. So just know they're coming. They are coming. And if um, you don't think one is coming to you, email me. I'd be happy to send them to you, okay? All right. Also, I have a wish list that you can print out. This will help you get organized. You can make a list of all the things that you want. And that way you can kind of see what you're going to order in January, what you're going to order in February, what you're going to order in March. Um, I've got other details, my top favorite things here. Um, and my Stampers Roundup card. I don't mention this very often, but I have a, a punch card. For every $50 you spend, you get a punch. And when you fill all of them up, you get $30 in free product. Um, so you can find that. I have a page on my blog. It's on the wish list page, and I send it in everything I mail out. So hopefully you've got one of those, and if not, message me, and I can link you to where that is. Okay, we'll talk about the projects in just a little while. Let's talk about the paper share. I have been telling you for a few weeks about the occasions paper and um, ribbon share. It's basically sharing every pack of paper and every bolt of ribbon between four people. So you're getting a quarter of each packet, okay? And I cut the 12 by 12 in half. This right here, by the way, is celebration shimmer paper <laughs> look at that i hope it's not blinding you this one is like psychedelic rainbows it actually says it's grapefruit grove this i'm going to wallpaper my bedroom in this <laughs> lovely lipstick i don't think my husband would like that and it's a little it's shiny but it's more matte than this and i am going to have a hard time using it because i love it so much gorgeous celebration item however if you order the paper share you're getting some of this for free all right so here's all the paper from the occasions catalog you'll get half a sheet of everything in the occasions catalog okay and you can see lots of spring colors there's valentine's paper I actually it looks like I have two sheets of each in here so that you can see front and back front and back this is the celebration paper we're going to talk about this today the botanical butterfly paper. Hey, thanks guys for sharing. I do really appreciate when you share the video. That is very beneficial for me and my business. So I really am grateful and I give prizes for that too. We'll talk about prizes in a little while. Um, so you'll get, if you get the paper share, you'll get both of the celebration papers for free. Here's a really cool paper. And guys, I don't know the names of these yet. I haven't memorized them, but look at it. It's very um, botanically, it's probably the name in there somewhere, but it's also vellum. Pretty. So you get half a sheet of all of those. Then for the six by six papers, you get one full sheet of each of these. And if my friend Stacy is watching, she has been dying to see the, the old muscle car paper, she was calling it. She has a family full of muscle car people. Look at that. And she's got two boys, so that would be perfect. This paper, oh, I love it so much, but I'm gonna wait until we get later on in the spring till I really start playing with this. Gorgeous. Okay, so that's that. Um, also, you would get, if you want the ribbon share, you would get a yard of each of the ribbons to, on today's post. Today's the last day. I am ordering all of this tomorrow, and then that's that's it. I'm not going to take any more orders. So here are the um, two shares. If you type this in, you will go and see the full details of everything that you get. If you buy both a paper and the ribbon share, you actually get something for free. Um, and you can register and pay here, but this will close at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning when I wake up and I close it, okay? Today, Thursday, January 3rd is the last day you can get in on my um, paper and ribbon shares. Okay, there's that. The other very exciting thing that I have is the new Valentine class. Hopefully you saw the video, I just uploaded it today. You guys, it's so hard to make videos when my family is here. Not that they're disrupting, it just feels weird talking to a camera by yourself when there's people in the house. <laughs> so it took me a while to get the video made, but I got it made and here are all the projects. Um, it's featuring the meant to be bundle, which is the Valentine bundle. 
there will be six make and takes in your kit plus two bonus tutorials in the PDF. Um, you'll get a sheet or a pack of the epoxy hearts. You'll get a bolt of flirty flamingo ribbon and lovely lipstick ribbon. The ribbon is actually free if you buy the option that includes both the stamp and the framelits. And that's option one. Option one is everything you see here. Plus you get a celebration item. Awesome, right? From now until March, all my classes that are over $50 in product include a celebration item of your choice, but there's an asterisk. Only things that will fit in my poly mailers, okay? So the big 12 by 12 paper is not included. Um, I think that's it. Um, the ribbon you could get, the stamp sets you could get, the embellishments you could get, any of them. You get, when you register for this class, you have a, a place to tell me which celebration item you want. Okay, all right, so there's that. You can go watch that video if you want all the full details. Of course, I have it linked on today's PDF right here. By the way, this PDF, if you're new or you don't remember, over on my blog right now, pinkbuckaroo.com is the post of everything we're doing today. And under the last picture, there's a link. You know, my camera is pointing further down at the end of the table, so I, I realized when I video when I recorded something earlier today, I had a lot of stuff up here <laughs> and couldn't see it. I got to get used to it. Um, anyway, PDF over at pinkbuggeroo.com. Link under this photo right here. You'll find this PDF. It has all the measurements and the products that you need for the three projects that we're making. It has a link to my Valentine class, the link to the um, product shares, and information about that starter kit. Also, it has the host code right here uh, for the make and takes. And I just got organized over the break. And look, here are all the make and take kits that I have sent over the last few months. Each one is packed. It, see, it has everything you need to make that project. It has a label with the link. And these are free. I send these out free with a $30 order. Let's see, where's the last, the most recent one? I always so far try to include a little gift tag for you as a thank you see there's your punch card that's included so today's no different today the three projects that we make if you want them and you are putting in an order between now and monday at midnight use this host code or this host code up here can you guys see it i can't see it on my phone because it's pointed weird. I'll check that in a second. But if you use that host code, you'll get the three make and takes for free as long as your order is a minimum of $30. Now, if your order is over $150, don't use the host code because then you're getting stamp and rewards, which are basically what we used to call host rewards. You're getting free stuff. And I will see your order and I will know that you wanted the projects. I'll send them to you anyway, okay? I'd rather you get those host benefits than use my host code, okay? Okay, there's that. Now, the, this month's tutorial bundle. Every month, these beautiful ladies and I each type up a tutorial in metric and imperial measurements, and my friend Kylie Bertucci bundles them all together into this giant PDF, and it's 12 different tutorials. You can see, I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek here of all the tutorials. I do this every month, you get it free, through, the e through email if you put in a $50 order with me. Sometimes it takes me a few days to send it out, um, but I email that out to you, I'll go through all my orders and send them out to anybody who's spent $50. Um, my team automatically gets them free. So like I was saying, that's a, that's a benefit of buying that starter kit. You're just automatically gonna get these free every month. Here's mine. Look how beautiful it is. I'm not supposed to show you. It's supposed to be a surprise. It's supposed to be just a sneak peek, like just that much. But I'm showing it to you. It's a cute bag. Mine, I always try to do a 3D. But all the designers are amazing. Um, some of us are former artisan design members. And um, it's an awesome tutorial bundle. So you get it free with a $50 order. You get it free if you're on my team or you can buy just the PDF for $15 over in my PDF store. In that, I haven't linked any of that yet. That comes tomorrow. We're doing our blog hop tomorrow morning. So come back and check on all of that tomorrow morning and you'll have more details about it. Um, if you wanna subscribe to these bundles, we offer a subscription price every six months um, where you get the six month free. Next month, February, 
is the first month in the six month time frame. So you'll be able to subscribe next month if you're interested in that. All right, let's move that. I'm getting done. My, my desk is getting clean. Um, next Tuesday, you guys, I'm going to be live showing you the new kits in the catalog. Um, typically, I am not a kit person. That doesn't mean that kits are not good. It just means I'm, I'm doing so many other things. I don't usually do kits, but they are fantastic. Um, Zelda, if you're watching, you were asking about this one, I think. She saw it at my bingo. This is the, well, let's look, because I'm going to tell you the wrong name. Um, do, 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 do. Where are they? Right here, page 20 and 21 of your catalog. And this one, this is that kit. And they don't really show the box at all, really. I don't see it at all. So you don't even realize that this kit, Incredible Like You Project Kit, comes with this beautiful gift box. I wish I had made that. I wish that was my design, but it's not. It comes in your kit straight from Stampin' Up. And then this one is the other one made to bloom. So Tuesday afternoon, I'll be live at two o'clock and I'm gonna go through these two kits as well as um, the kit that's in the celebration catalog, okay? So look for that and if you like kits, get them. They are amazing. And this one took me about an hour and this one took me about 30 minutes, super simple. Okay, but we'll talk about that on Tuesday. All right, I think we're ready to stamp. Oh wait, we got prizes. Um, oh, you know what? I, Patty, I'm seeing your list. I have I uploaded the wrong wish list. Thank you, Patty. I will upload the right one. I appreciate you telling me that. Oh my goodness, it's always something, isn't it? All right, let's move these. Oh, out of the way. I think you guys want to hear about prizes. So two weeks ago, it was before Christmas, and I had this prize and this prize. Um, don't worry, these aren't Christmas stamp sets. You can use them in the winter. Um, and the two winners are Brenda Gamble and Emily Campbell. Now, you can win a prize by sharing the video here on Facebook or going over to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, and scrolling down to the bottom and entering your information there. There's a little thing called a raffle copter, and you enter your name, your email, and I ask you, I don't know, some silly questions, and then you enter. So there's two ways to win prizes every week. Um, so make sure that you do that. Um, Brenda and Emily, I don't think I have either of your mailing addresses, so please message me. You have two weeks to claim your prizes, okay? This week, I've got and I only have one now because the other one I had to order this morning, but this week's prize, two sets of these, one for sharing the video and one for entering over on my blog. Amazing Life is a beautiful stamp set that I'm actually using for my Stamp and Blends Club this month, and some of these adorable Gingham Gala adhesive back sequins. So we'll give, I'll give away two sets of these next week, okay? So make sure you share and make sure you hop over to my blog and enter to win over there. Whew, okay, I think I've covered it all, and I think we're ready to stamp. Let's see. We've got three things, and like I said, guys, it was nearly impossible. I had actually two other projects here that I was going to do that I had photographed, and then yesterday afternoon, I changed my mind. <laughs> so now we're doing these. So I just know that there's so many wonderful things in this um, catalog that I had a hard time deciding on which ones to show you. But I'm gonna do these three. We're gonna start with a desktop calendar. Hopefully, you guys have been seeing, um, I've started showing them on my blog. I think I've shown two every year. I make a little desktop calendar. See how it sits, it has a little easel. I make a desktop calendar to send out with my catalog to customers who have ordered with me in the last six months. Um, I do several different designs because I get tired of making the same thing over. I make between 250 and 300 of these. So I try to vary them up and make them different um, so that it's not completely crazy for me to try to make that many of the same ones. Um, this one actually is a brand new design. I didn't send this one out at all. This is just for you guys. Um, I had made this card and I thought let, we were gonna make this card, but then I decided to change it to the calendar because I know you guys always like the calendars. We always, I always get lots of questions. So that's what we're gonna make. Let me quickly show you some of the other designs and these will all be on my blog in the next week or so. This was a close second. I love this cactus set and you can see it's got that pink color. Um, isn't that cute? That cactus set, mm -mm, I love it. 
It is beautiful. This is the one that I have up on my desk. It features our new uh, butterfly botanical paper. And this is from the kit stamp set, actually. It's interesting when you try to find stamp sets to put on a calendar. Um, you want something that kind of is generic, but kind of talks about the year. Um, this one, you're so awesome. I thought that would be a nice reminder to have to look at every day. This one, hope your day is as amazing as you. Wouldn't that be good to tell yourself that every day? Um, these two, I actually did these in each of the five gingham gala colors but I didn't have any left over I mailed them all out this one's in lemon lime twist and this one is in um balmy blue and we're actually going to do this today on our little fry box super cute and bright and fun here's one that features that gingham gala stuff and those beautiful butterflies that I am sure you have seen everywhere online that was one of the things we could pre-order um back in um, November and so lots of people have it and it's beautiful. This one is the lasting, is that the name? See, I just don't know the names yet. It's a celebration stamp set and it's an, a level two set. So there are two things in this catalog that are free with a hundred dollar purchase. One of them is this stamp set, this Lily stamp set, and it is stunning. It's that, um, now I'm not gonna remember the name, but that special um, kind of stamp distinctive, that's what they call it, where it's totally flat, but when you stamp it, it gives you all this texture. Um, and you are proof that there is good in the world. I can't remember, that is not from that stamp set. I can't remember where I, oh no, it is. It is from that stamp set. Yeah, you are proof that there is good in this world. Beautiful, did lots of flicking of my blends. I've been doing that a lot. Then here is the last one. Um, this one's called Bloom by Bloom, guys, I don't know. Yep, yeah, right here, bloom by bloom. Look, doesn't that scream like March and spring weather? I just oh, love it. Kel uh, Kelly green and uh, navy are my favorite spring color combo. So I will be using that a ton. So here's the calendar, the last calendar. So hopefully those of you who received catalogs from me, if you placed an order um, that was over $50, you should have gotten a free calendar. Okay, let's stamp. I keep saying that and then I keep talking. This one, like I said, I I just had a hard time deciding, but I love this little teapot and I have really been into watercoloring lately. So I decided we're going to watercolor that teapot and I went with kind of an unexpected color, a bright, bold red, and it's called Poppy Parade. Now this stamp set right here, Tea Together. Oh, and I need to tell you something else about these stamps. This stamp set is in the occasions catalog I marked the page right here it is $22 it has coordinating framelits but you won't find it in this catalog you're gonna find it in the celebration catalog over here on page 17 it's a free item with a hundred dollar purchase and they told us that these will probably be back these are gonna stay around for a while after celebration um, so it's a it's a good investment you'll see it for a long time you'll see lots of designs um, and I think you could probably pretty easy easily get your order up to a hundred dollars so you could have those framelits now I don't know if I've mentioned to you guys I think I have that Stamina Up has completely changed their stamps there's gonna no longer be wood mount stamps effective the next annual catalog there are no wood stamps in here so if you are a wood mount stamp fan, I am sorry to tell you that they are gone. Now, what we normally use on our clear blocks is called clings, or clear mount stamps. And we had a problem with our clear mount stamps. They wouldn't stick to the blocks when we um, put the label on them. So you probably noticed when I stamped with all my stamps, mine never had the sticker on the bottom because once we put that sticker, it would just fall off the block and it was a problem. So Stampin' Up! went back to the drawing board and redesigned their stickers. Um, now, I have had this question. I don't want to put the stickers on my stamps. Can, will they still stick? Absolutely. Yes, they are the same as they were before. I don't know if they're exactly the same, but they work exactly the same. They will stick. In fact, I realized today I hadn't put my stickers on here. I am so used to just pulling them out and put them on my blocks. It's going to take me some time to remember to put my stickers on my stamps, um, which I really like having on there. So yes, if you don't want to put the stickers on your stamp, you can still stick them to the block without 
the sticker. However, I recommend that you put the sticker on because the stickers are super sticky. I want to show you the right way to do it, okay? Let's see. Let's do let's do a different one. The Happy Mother's Day is really pretty. When it comes like this in your stamp case, you need to peel off that paper, okay? And then you can see it's not sticky, it's just the foam. Go to your sticker sheet, and there's a line in the middle of each sticker in the middle. You want to pull the top little um, waxy paper off the top from the middle, okay, like that. Then very carefully lay your stamp down in there, okay? If you guys don't get it perfect, you're not gonna die. Don't worry, I've had several people tell me that. They're worried. It doesn't matter. It's gonna be on there. If it's a little crooked, you're still gonna be okay, all right? So don't panic. Now, what you're gonna do is peel it off. You can see mine is a little bit hanging over. It's fine, it's fine. We don't have to be perfect, you guys. Now, what you can see is that these really stick. I don't know if you can tell how sticky that is. They are so sticky that sometimes when you leave your stamps on the block, it's hard to get it off. Not like, oh my gosh, it's never coming off, but you know, if, you, if you're in a hurry and you're not being careful, you could damage your stamp. So when you go to pull it off, if it's sticking a little bit, just take the tip of your scissors and kind of stick it down there underneath and get it started and then it'll come off just fine, okay? Another thing, and I don't know, this may not be a, a sanctioned recommendation, but if you have a, a stamp and you, you're just like, it's way too sticky, um, it's hard to get off the block, just take it and kind of stamp it on your arm or your, your, je <laughs> your jeans and it'll kind of reduce that stickiness a little, but it'll still be sticky. Now, if you have stamps that you are using so much that they do lose a lot of their stickiness and you feel like they're not sticky enough anymore, then you just go wash it. Wash it in the sink with some Dawn soap and the stickiness will return. They're amazing, you guys. I really am excited of what Stampin' Up! has done with these cling mount stamps. Um, I think that they really nailed it um, with this fix. So you'll notice there are two different kinds of stamps only now. Photopolymer, which is the see-through, right? You can see all the way through it and cling mount, which is what I just showed you. Okay, we still haven't stamped. I'm still talking, you guys. <laughs> okay, I'm getting all my stuff. I don't have to pick my daughter up at three o'clock today, so we got plenty of time. We're gonna stamp this beautiful teapot in, ah, thanks, Patricia. Kathy, I'm glad you like them. We're gonna use uh, stays on. In my video, I said it's alcohol-based. I meant that it's a solvent ink, basically. It's going to be permanent, and it's not going to spread out and smear like a water-based ink would be. Um, and I did pre-record all of these videos. They'll be up on my YouTube channel, hopefully this, I don't know, maybe this weekend. I've recorded them all, but done nothing with them. All right, so ink it up. Stamp it. I am using watercolor paper. When you use a aqua painter, you want to use either watercolor paper or um, our shimmer white, which we're going to use on the next project because uh, regular whisper white paper will start to pill when you get it wet and the texture of the paper kind of tears a little bit. So only use watercolor paper or shimmer white. Now what I'm doing is that stays on dries really quickly, which isn't a pro which is great. It's not a problem. However, when I use a very light color like Daffodil Delight, sometimes I haven't given it enough time to really set. So I'm just gonna make sure and take my heat tool and just dry it, just to be sure. All right, so you're gonna need your aqua painter. If you haven't used an aqua painter before, this is an aqua painter, they come in sets of two. It unscrews here and you fill it up with water. And then it's a paintbrush on one side. Um, my mom gave the girls, you know, my mom is a professional artist and my girls are all like super artistic like her. She gave my girls a little um, travel paint set for Christmas and they actually came with these. She called them something else. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't called aqua painters, but they were basically like this. Um, so for like on the go, people who want to paint, they can take this and they don't have to worry about a, you know, little um, water thing. So you want to get a little palette of your ink. I am using just a clear block. 
um, in a little while I'll show you, you can use the inside of your paint, uh, inside of your um, ink, ink pad as well. And like I said, this is Poppy Parade. I have kind of squeezed my brush to get it nice and wet, but I don't want it drippy wet, so I'm kind of tapping it off. Oh, nope, I knew I was gonna do that. What I wanna do first, pretend I didn't do that. What I wanna do first is come over here and just give my little teapot a watercolor wash. I'm gonna go, I mean a water wash. I'm gonna go over it with water, just water. That's gonna get it ready for the color. That way I won't have any like blobs of color that, whoops, I almost did that. <laughs> that I'm not thinking straight. That um, don't, that just kind of soak down in the paper. This water kind of primes our image and you wanna be real careful over here. Your aqua painter comes, like I said, in a set of two. I'm gonna grab my chair. I don't color well standing up. And one is um, fatter than the other. So for this, I would recommend you doing the, the more skinny brush. Now you can see as I picked up that color and set it down, you can see it's just really kind of traveling around the image. That water wash, not only does it prime the surface, but it really kind of is gonna help your paint, your ink stay where you want it to stay. All right, now I started at the bottom because the bottom of my teapot is gonna be darker than the top. It's darker because the light is shining from the top. So I'm gonna, as I work my way up, whoops, oh man, I'm getting messy, you guys because I'm on camera. As I work my way up, the ink is gonna get lighter because I'm kind of running out of ink as I go up, but I want it to be lighter. Now that's really light, so we're gonna bring a little bit more in. The Aqua Painter is so fun. It really um, is very artistic in my mind. I always feel like, oh, look at me, I'm an artist. <laughs> It's fun, fun, fun to play with. I did a watercolor class a couple of years ago um, and uh, we had so much fun. Maybe I should do another one of those watercolor classes because um, everybody seemed to really enjoy it. I think we were a little bit intimidated uh, by watercoloring. I know I was in the beginning until my mom gave me a great lesson. Uh, let's see, the other options you could color this teapot in, of course, are your Stampin' Blends, which are, you know, really are my favorite. Um, you could also use our watercolor pencils, which work with the Aqua Painter. You color, you color it with a pencil, um, just kind of lightly, and then you take the water from your Aqua Painter and you spread the ink all around. Also, we have something called a blender pen, which is not to be confused with the Stampin' Blends. A blender pen looks like it's more similar to the look of our stamp and write markers. It's a skinny little marker that has two tips, one on each end, and inside there's a um, a liquid, and I don't want to say what it is because I'm probably wrong. I don't know. Sometimes I, I feel like I make stuff up in my head, but it's <laughs> some kind of great liquid that will do the exact same thing as your aqua painter. It spreads it all around and then you can wipe it off on your cardstock, I mean on your paper towel and it cleans it so you can use it for the next color. Those are, um, they run out. Once the, the, the liquid inside is gone, there's no way to like fill it up with your sink like I do with my aqua painter. I mean, I think there are some underground ways to refill it, but I don't know, so I won't tell you. Um, but I, I like the Aqua Painter. The Aqua Painter is just beautiful. All right, so you can see I'm just kind of continuing to add color and I could sit here and just add, 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 add color and forget that you guys are, are there. I could forget. All right, I think it looks pretty good. Now, I'm gonna run this clean on my paper towel and I cannot see your comments. I need to move my, you know what, I'm gonna grab my iPad. Sorry guys, hold on a second. I was so prepared with all the things I wanted to show you, I forgot to get my iPad so I could see what you guys were actually saying to me. All right, now we're going to, you wanna just keep squeezing until you get all that color out. We are going to color, and I just used that ink pad and I of course put it back. 
I'm making some cards for the new people who join my team, and I was using Daffodil Delight. Now this time, we're gonna use the inside. If you don't wanna use your blocks, you can use the inside of your stamp case. What you need to do is turn it over and press in the center, and your ink will leave ink right there on the lid, so you've got a palette right there. All right, let me see, I gotta pull that video up. Now remember, you wanna do a water wash first, then get your yellow. See how I kind of got it wet? I mixed that water in there with it. And then it's just gonna travel. The UPS man came by literally five minutes before my I started this live video, which is funny, because usually he comes during my live video. He didn't bring anything fun. It was just an Amazon order, and I don't remember what I ordered. Do you guys do that? Do you order from Amazon, and then you're like, what did I order? Okay, now I'm gonna take just a little bit of that Poppy Parade and just kind of spread it around here in the middle. Not a lot. Let me get that off. And then I'm gonna come back with some yellow and really just kind of add more yellow. I just wanted a little bit of coloration difference there. All right, so let's move that before we have a disaster. Oops, I almost put my sleeve in it. And let's move that. And now one more, we need some ink here. This is Old Olive for the leaves. And we're gonna do that. You know, I really was thinking about um, this teapot. I am, I'm not a tea drinker, I'm not a coffee drinker. A stamp set for me would have a Diet Coke in it, but I just think it's beautiful and it's fun if you like to color. Um, it, it just is a really neat set and the, the sentiments are beautiful. And it has a Happy Mother's Day stamp, which is always great, right? But you, you could just, the color possibilities are really endless with this. You could just use any color and the paper that I use is black and white. So again, any color would work. All right, I still haven't pulled up, hold on, let's see. Okay, now I can see you guys. Have you asked questions? Did I miss them? I'll come back and look. All right, let's bring the big shot over and cut these guys out. I think they're dry enough. Um, yeah, they're good. All right, so let's put these awesome little framelits, these free awesome framelits, right here. This color just pops, and then when you put that yellow with it, gorgeous. So now I need to do one with a teacup. And the teacup would be really cute. We gotta make a little tea holder, a little tea bag holder. We had a tea set many years ago. Well, not that many, maybe three years ago. That was insanely popular. They could not keep it in stock. And then it retired. It didn't even stay. <laughs> Everybody lost their minds. I still have mine just because out of sentimental reason, because it was so popular. So hopefully this will take the place of that beautiful set that we can't get anymore. All right, it's time to put our little our little calendar together. Um, I just start with a card base. It's just half a sheet of cardstock. This is thick whisper white. I cut it in half at four and a fourth and scored it at five and a half. This is that botanical butterfly. Well, darn it, my adhesive is over here too. All right, <laughs> you can see it's got the butterflies on that side, but that's okay. And really, look, this paper would not go with that, but that's okay because look. Did you guys think of me when you saw this paper? I hope you did because you know how much I love gingham buffalo check in black and white. I wanted to literally cry when I saw it. So cute. Um, now I have cut us a little border um, using this framelit. This is from the meant to be the Valentine, um, no, it's not called meant to be, it's called Be Mine Stitch Framelits. It is a great little scallop border. So I am going to just put a little bit of adhesive. Oh, my adhesive, my adhesive is a little fatter, so we're gonna try to make that work. And I put it so that the scallops are pointing up. Because if you, when you point the scallops down, you kind they kind of get lost in that pattern. All right. Now the calendar. I get this question. Oh, I know I have one here. I get this question 
so much that I have a saved response I can just copy and paste. These calendars that I make every year come from tailoredexpressions.com. Um, you go over and click shop and then supplies and calendars and they are the mini, dust, mini tear off, I can't remember, they're the mini calendars. There's a link today on my blog, right under this one, it's a direct link. They are 30 cents each, you order them in packs of 10 and they sell out quickly. So if you want them, you need to get them. I know last year in April, I made something and I had to actually buy this year's calendars. They, had, they were out of the 2018, but they had the 2019, okay? So make sure if you want them, you go get them. Um, 10 cents, no, 30 cents each. And I just adhere this down like this. And then of course, we're gonna get some dimensionals. Reb, what did you say I missed that? Let me go back and look. So I saw you say something while I was talking. I always use too much water when I try to watercolor. Yes, you know what, Reb, me too. I used to do that too, and I have learned. Put a paper towel next to you and wipe it, wipe, 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 until it's, you know, it's not dry, but it's not drippy, because too much water will ruin your project, and it's so frustrating. All right, dimensional for this. We're almost there, we're almost done with this one. It's taking me 45 minutes to get finished with the first project. What's going on with me today? I'm not in any hurry. All right, now, we, the sentiment. You know, like I said, it's really hard to find what, not really hard, that's not the right word. It's um, tricky to find what sentiment you wanna use because you don't wanna say something like thank you or happy birthday. You want something that can go all year. When I made this card, I used our little word, uh, our new word, then let's and put thanks, but that wouldn't work here. I did think about putting friend, um, but then I thought, no, we're just gonna go with something from the stamp set, which is super cute. And it says, it's just something generic, you know, just something fun. And it says, love is a warm cup of tea. Look how cute that font is. And my friend, Ange McKay, commented on this earlier and she said, for a second, I thought that said, love is a warm cup of Ted. My husband's name is Ted. <laughs> I said, uh, I don't think that would have the same meaning, but that's pretty funny. He would think that's very funny. All right, one inch circle punch. And I'm gonna put it over here like it's tied to the handle, okay? Just a little um, baker's twine, basic black. And let's cut that and put that right there. And my take your pick tool is over on my other tray. So we'll use the end of our scissors. Okay, so there you go. Now, there's one last thing you gotta do to your card because if you have it like this, eventually it's gonna slide open like that. We're gonna make an easel bottom. This is a Thick Whisper White, four inches by five and a fourth. I've scored it in half at two and three fourths. And then I have folded up, or I have <laughs> scored half inch from each end. Don't worry, those measurements are over there on um, that PDF. See how it, it forms when you um, fold it? It's like a little V. So I've put adhesive there, I'm closing it up. I'm gonna lay this one in here. The reason why a few years ago I started making them four inches wide, because every now and then, with my, if I made them four and a fourth, one would be sticking out a little bit, like it was too big or it was off-centered. So I started making them four inches wide so that wouldn't happen. And there you go, see how that is? So stinking cute. I love making calendars. I could make calendars all year. I hope you guys like it. Now, if you order this week, and you qualify for the free make and takes, you're gonna get a calendar in your make and take packet too. I've ordered enough for you guys, okay? All right, so let me know what you think. You guys like it? Are you inspired? That I'm telling you, that teapot was not something that jumped out at me at first, but I kinda love it. It's funny what you end up loving, not necessarily the things that jumped out at you right at first. All right, I know, Karen, I'm the same way. I thought, meh, a teapot, meh. No, love it. All right, so our next project, excuse me, I'm super thirsty. Next project features this guy who <laughs> made quite the splash at on stage for a few reasons. This is a celebration set, which means this stamp set is free with a $50 purchase. 
Uh, he will probably be the star of a future Facebook Live um, because I love this set so much. Um, and we're going to use this little guy right here. It's really cute. It even has these little um, flies here with these. I don't know. It's really, really cute. I love cute, whimsical sets. Now, the other set that I'm using is the meant to be. The stamps are with the class over here. I am using the heart framelits and where is it? This one to the best friend a girl could ever ask for. Now, of course, you know, if you don't have use for that sentiment, change it. Change it to anything. Thank you. Hello. Whatever. It could be anything. All right. So let's get started with our frog. We're going to stamp him this time on shimmer white in stays on because we're going to watercolor him too. So let's get him done. Now he's a little bit more, let's see, what's the word I want to use? Not tricky. Tedious? No, not tedious. You've got to be more careful with your aqua painter because his arms and legs are very skinny. So if you have a blender pen, you might want to use a blender pen on his legs. All right. You'll see why in a minute. Let me get my, my aqua painter clean. And we're going to do a little watercolor wash. You have to just barely use the tip of your aqua painter. And like Reb said, do not get too much water on here because that's when ink starts to spread. Now, luckily, we're going to we're going to just hand cut this guy out. And if you ever like, I feel like I do have a little bit too much water. You can just dab it. If you ever do um, get to a point where you feel like um, you have too much on there, you can dab it. All right. Oh, I already, I don't need this. I already did it. All right, Call Me Clover is the color I am using. And this would be a good one to color with your Stampin' Blends. And I have to be real careful not to, you guys, I need glasses because I can hardly see the difference between these lines. Um, be real careful. You don't want his eyeball to be green right no green eyeballs and then we're just going to kind of spread that color all around he this guy was one of the main stage stampers did a presentation on this set and she was super adorable she did some super adorable projects but one of them and it was an evening fun like stamping night where we were all you know, everybody had gone out to eat and everybody was feeling kind of crazy. And so everybody just kind of got their giggles and <laughs> he was a little inappropriate. He was doing some things with his hands the way she had him situated and everybody just went bananas. So it was super funny and cute. I don't, I'm sure she didn't think it was funny and cute, but um, it ended up being really, really good and really funny and cute. One of the things that I remember most. All right, now... I'm gonna dry him because he's pretty wet and I need to hand cut him. And you can see my color bled out a little bit, so I had too much water, just like Reb said. That's what happens when you have too much water on your project. Can you guys see that? See how he bled out? <laughs> that sounds bad. The color bled out. So if I was not gonna trim out this guy, I would probably do it again. Um, when you want to fussy cut something, make sure to get your good little scissors, good sharp, you gotta have a good sharp small pair of scissors and cut out all that extra cardstock because that just gets in your way. All right, now, typically when I fussy cut, I say stay right on the outside of the black line and leave a little white cloud. Well, this time today, I'm gonna go right along that black line because I have a lot of a lot of ink that kind of spread out. Maybe he's maybe he's wet. He just jumped out of the pond. Isn't he so cute? The sentiments with this set. Let's look at them while I'm cutting. Hey, that's a good one. Because sometimes you just want to send somebody a note. Hey. Um, and I like little tiny things too, little tiny sentiments that don't take away from maybe the, the picture or the um, image on your card. 
Hoppy for you, that's really cute. And then you can do anything. I did a card, oh yes, I designed something yesterday for a team training, my team. It's another perk of being on my team. Rhonda Wade and I do a, well, I should say, Rhonda Wade does an amazing creative convention um, online. It's this online event um, that she does maybe quarterly. And a few years ago, she asked me to join her. So I help, I do some of the training and I do some of the make and takes and some of the extra classes. Um, but anyway, I was designing for that and it's a perk. My team gets to have access to it for free. Um, and they get the, isn't he cute? They get the kits, um, of course, you know, at a discount. But anyway, the card or the project that I designed, I put the little crown on him. See how there's a little crown? It's so cute. I know, there should be like a drinking game. Hi, Mom. My mom's here. Mom, have you gone back to school? I thought you were going back to school today. There should be a drinking game. How many times does Erica say that's so cute? Probably a lot. Okay, now we're gonna cut out these hearts. We got a lot of hearts to cut out. Let me get all my pieces. I have to say that the meant to be framelits, and I don't even have all of them on here. I keep calling them that, the Be Mine Stitched Heart, no, Be Mine Stitched Framelits. Um, I love them so much because they have stitching on them, um, those stitch lines. I love the stamp set, don't get me wrong, but if I had to choose one, I think the framelits would win. They are amazing. Um, this one cuts out a solid heart and a scalloped edge, so does this one. And then you've got the tall and skinny hearts with the stitching, and then you've got this row. For me, when I cut a lot of class kits and I need to include a small heart, look how many I can cut at once. I love it. All right, we're gonna use these two tall and skinny hearts. We're gonna cut out the big one here um, from Flirty Flamingo. How come I have ink all over my hands? Every time, guys, every time. And then this one is just the solid heart that goes on the inside, and we're gonna cut that out of Flirty Flamingo designer series paper. It's in the Brights stack. Mom says she's back at work, but no class last period. Oh, lucky you. I bet it was hard going back today. Those of you who have gone back to work after the holidays, it's so hard. Look at that. Isn't that yummy? Anything. I'm a sucker for anything with that stitched line on it. All right, now, I should have done this ahead of time, but we're going to cut out this line of hearts right here. And you can see how narrow it is, and it's very difficult to adhere. So, no problem, I'm just gonna get our, this is a piece of our multi-purpose adhesive sheets, and I'm gonna take my Call Me Clover cardstock, stick it in here, it becomes a sticker. All right, so put it in there, and then I'm gonna cut off the excess. Let's see, cut that off, and cut that off, and then what we have is a sticker sheet. I know, I've shown you guys this stuff before. So then you're gonna get your heart framelits and we're gonna run them through. I recommend running them through long ways. I'm sure you would rather be arting, mom. My mom is a watercolor, well, no, that's not, that's too general. She does all kinds of art. But she's very, very good at, art, at watercolor and drawing and she drew and colored these beautiful little sketches in her sketchbook while she was at my house. You know, they were beautiful. All right, this is where I told you you needed your take your pick tool. You can just poke all these out. Oh look, it's coming all the way out. You can also, of course, use your dye brush, but this little take your pick tool is a good use too. And I always have this right here. My dye brush isn't far, but I'll just do this. Have you guys tried this take your pick tool? It's really versatile. I keep forgetting to use it. All right, so all those little hearts we can save for something else. Now our frog is gonna be holding a little heart. So uh, it's gonna be from the sparkle paper and I just need one, so I'm just gonna put it there, whoops. There on the end, cut out just one. And then we'll be ready to put our card together. 
see right here, and I can just punch that one out and save those for later. I need to start, start a little box for all my extra little hearts, because I do have quite a few extra little hearts now. And then I can just pull them when I need them. All right, we are ready to assemble a um, Call Me Clover card base. This time I cut the cardstock in half long ways at five and a half and scored it at four and a fourth, okay? So that's your card base. We are going to start with our hearts. So stack your DSP heart right there. I have no idea how much battery I have left on my phone, hopefully. I've got enough battery to get us through the last project. I can't see it. It was fully charged, we'll see. Now remember, this is a sticker sheet. So I probably should have stuck this in, done this first. Yep, okay, let's pick the heart up a little bit. Ah. Put your green hearts on and then stick your heart down and put our little Prince Charming frog in the middle. And then grab your little, little sparkle heart, sparkle glimmer heart, and we're gonna put him on with a tiny dimensional like he's holding it all right now with flirty flamingo ink we're going to stamp that sentiment on a scrap of white this scrap is one inches by whatever it doesn't really matter because we're going to cut it down to about two and a half inches so it probably needs to be about four inches long i'm going to stick it in my tailor tag punch like this and cut that off and then trim it, add some adhesive, and slide it right there. And of course, we need a bow. Someone recently asked me why all my projects have bows. And I said, why not? I have to have bows. I never feel like my project looks completed until it has a bow. That's not true, I don't put bows on 100%, maybe 95% of my projects. All right, let's see, right there, so cute. Oh, I said it again. Okay, now there's one last thing we're gonna do to this. We're gonna take the Wink of Stella and we're gonna color in some of these hearts so that we have a little more I don't know, texture, contrast, whatever you wanna call it. Just color that background paper, not all of it. And there you have it, Prince Charming the Frog. What do you guys think? Are you gonna pick Mr. So Happy, So Hoppy on your order? It's so hard to decide because they're all so good, but he was definitely on my first order. That and that beautiful botanical butterfly paper. All right, we are almost there. We've got one more project, and I love this next project. Okay, let me, hold on, hold please. I've gotta get all my hearts. I've gotta get them all put together. Thanks guys, you're so sweet. Thank you. I like the colors, these colors together, the Flirty Flamingo and the Call Me Clover. I think they're a good combo. All right, what else do I need to get out of the way for our next project? I always make little trays with each project so that I can just throw everything on and clean it off later. See my tray here? All right, goodbye, Mr. Hoppy. Actually, now I have three of them. I'm gonna stack them up right there. All right, one more. Let me grab that tray. This tray was a little too small for everything I needed for this project. This project came from a need. I wanted a fry box. If you've been around the Stamping Up world for a while, you know we used to have a fry box die. Well, it retired a long time ago and I really miss it. So I thought, okay, how can I make a fry box? Uh-oh, the cola sack is filling with kids. I bet the doorbell's gonna ring soon. Oh, you know what, that always happens. Okay, so here's the finished project, a little fry box, and it doesn't require any dies. You're just gonna need your Simply Scored and a two inch circle. I am also using the piece of cake stamp set with the coordinating punch. 
All right, so let's first make our fry box. And I need, here it is, I need to see my measurements. Remember the measurements are right here. And luckily, during my recording this morning, I found that my measurements were incorrect. So I have now corrected them for you. And it'll be right on the PDF. This is Daffodil Delight, and it is four and a fourth by eight inches. We're gonna score the short side at one inch and three and a fourth. Turn and score the long side at three and a half and four and a half. That's it. Now you're gonna take your designer series paper. Where'd it go? Here we go, here we go. This again is that butterfly botanicals. Am I calling it the right? No, I'm calling it backwards. Botanical butterfly designer series paper. It's two and an eighth by three and three eighths. You wanna put this on before you punch. That way you can punch them both at the same time and they'll both be exactly the same. So take your two inch circle punch and you're gonna set it down in here. You wanna center it between those two score lines and go up about halfway and punch. And there you have it. Now, all we need to do, let's burnish those score lines before I cut. Make sure if you use your bone folder, it'll get them nice and crisp. I thought this would be a nice little party favor for a birthday party or even like a bridal shower, party favor for a bridal shower or a baby shower. All right, I've snipped those lines and we're gonna fold. Obviously, I didn't snip them far enough. Let's see, there we go. Okay, now fold those two guys in, the center guys, and fold the back up into the side squares like that. Okay, now Take your front flaps, put adhesive on the inside, and fold it up and over. And there's your fry box. Pretty easy, right? All right, so I cut a piece, another piece of that Butterfly Botanicals paper. Hopefully I can say it the right way. I'm gonna put this, it's just a little bit longer than our fry box, so it should be hanging over just a bit. All right, now for the cake. I have shown you guys this trick before, so it, I find it very important to show you each time. When you have a punch that punches out two stamps at once, st uh, punch a scrap piece of paper like this. This gives you a template for how to put these on your clear block, which I know is here. Ooh, I have lost it, guys. Everything's everywhere. So let's pull out the cake stand, and I am using the drippy icing cake, <laughs> that one right there. And I'm gonna lay this down on my block. Let's see, we'll put the cake there first and then I put my template, just kind of push it down over my cake. And I'm gonna take my cake stand and fit it, it's like a little puzzle. Fit it in there and you know that if it's fitting inside where you've punched, oh goodness, he's gonna give me trouble. There we go. That now, when you stamp it, the wheels are coming off. Okay, there we go. <laughs> nope, we got it. There, now, when I stamp it, I know I'll be able to punch it perfectly, okay? So now take that off, and we're gonna emboss this in white embossing powder because we're gonna color, watercolor wash over it, and that embossing powder is gonna keep that watercolor right where we want it. I'm running the embossing buddy over my shimmer white cardstock that's gonna re reduce any kind of static that is there that would keep those embossing um, little powders, little crystals from sticking where they should. I don't know, my cake stand doesn't look right. Well, we're going for it. I think it jumped, I think it moved. Naughty, it's a very naughty stamp. All right, Versamark ink is what I used. Now I'm gonna put white embossing powder. I have my embossing powder in this little tub that is from TJ Maxx, I think. And yeah, that looks wonky, do you guys see that? That's gonna be a problem, but that's okay, we're, we're going with it. 
Now, get your heat tool, and it takes just a minute, well, not a minute, maybe like 20 seconds to heat up to the right temperature, and it's going to turn the embossed images shiny. Can you see that on the cake now? It's quite magical every time you do it. That's how you'll know you're ready. Oh, this, I don't know why my cake stand is wonky. That's all right. All right. There we go. Now, I need to grab that Daftil Delight ink off of the first tray. And we've got our little paper towel here, and we've got our aqua painter. Remember, not too wet. And I'm gonna go in between all the little drippy drips and get it wet. I want the drippy dripping icing to stay white and the cake to be yellow. Daffodil delight. Oh, this feels like a lot of water. All right, I'm gonna dab it. All right, now let's see. Mm, that does feel like a lot of water, but see how the, the water is just running in between those embossed lines. And when it dries, the white will still remain white because it resists the color, the embossing um, powder does. Boy, I thought I got all that water off and it is really watery. All right, oh my goodness. It's very interesting as I finish up today with you guys. All right, let's see, hold that paper like that. Now, for the stand, we're gonna use Smoky Slate. And we don't have to be as particular with our Smoky Slate, we can just do a wash because we don't need to, we want the whole thing to be gray. So I'm just gonna do a wash like that. That color looks so strange. I wonder if I still had gray in my aqua painter. Let's add a little more. And um, like you might have seen on my calendars, I did this in lots of different colors. So of course, the sky's the limit. Let's dry that because it is very wet. And then we'll punch it. We'll see how our little cake stand looks. He's looking a little wonky. Mm, a little bit more. Okay. Now, here's the true test. Let's see. Yeah, he's a little off, but not too much. Yeah, not too much. So you line them up, punch them out, and there you have it. So you can see, if you're going to make a bunch of these, you definitely want to line them up like that. That's going to save your paper. You're not going to use as much trying to punch, you know, different, the two different shapes separately. All right, let's hold off. We need to put that cake stand on first. All right, where are my mini dimensionals hiding? They are probably on another tray. Hmm. Well, good grief, I don't see them at all. We'll get a new pack, a new sheet. I love my mini dimensionals. They sure do last a long time, a lot longer than my regular dimensionals. I don't use them as much, but they also are so tiny. You get more on a sheet. All right, there's the cake stand and the beautiful cake, who's still a little bit wet. Now, let's close up the ink, Erica. Don't forget. Let's stamp the sentiment. Why have I just lost it here at the end? Everything's missing. Everything's gone. Here it is. The sentiment I picked from the set says, enjoy every crumb. That's cute, right? That could be really for anything you wanted. Um, a party favor, a wedding favor. You know what, I'm gonna do these different this time. I'm just gonna cut them at an angle instead of doing the banner. And I'm gonna put two of these tiny dimensionals on either side and it's just gonna kind of straddle that cake stand 
like that. And then, last but not least, let's cut, punch a sparkly butterfly. This is the new butterfly punch. It has two butterflies on it. We have a stamp set that coordinates. A dimensional right there. I definitely think this would be good for a shower, some kind of bridal shower. So cute. Now what I did is I put my little treat in a three by six cello bag and I'm using some of this Highland Heather um, ribbon that is in the celebration catalog. It actually comes in a pack of five different ribbons. You get five bolts of ribbon um, for your one celebration pick, which comes free with a $50 order or 50, yes, 50, minimum $50 order. And five bolts of ribbon for free, I'll take it. And they coordinate, the colors coordinate with our, wrong scissors, coordinate with our gingham gala suite, which is where that butterfly punch is. And I'll just slide these guys, hopefully I didn't put too many in there. There we go, mini fry box. Did you guys recognize what was in here? It's the snowman poop that I made. <laughs> I had it still laying around when I made this in late December. So I thought, oh, it'll go. All right, you guys, we have finished our three projects. Let's look at them. Like I said, I can't even say that these are my three favorite things from the catalogs because how do you pick, really? I mean, how do you pick? Remember, you wanna hop over to my blog, grab the PDF. Everything you need is on these two pages. Thanks for the hearts, you guys. Um, today's the last day for the product shares. Here's where you can register for the Valentine class, information on the starter kit. And if you order and you want these make and takes for free, make sure you use this host code, okay? All right, you guys, that's it for me today. Ooh, I went way over in time today, um, but there's just so much to see. I will be back on Tuesday with um, a Facebook Live showing you the new kits. And then next Friday, we'll, we'll be back on schedule at two o'clock with something new. All right, you guys, have a great week and I will see you on Tuesday. Thanks everybody, bye.